on tops of these temperatures that I'm talking about now. In the Northern Peninsula tomorrow, uh, near 25 in St. Anthony. Tomorrow, 20 in the Straits. Uh, looking at Cartwright and up into coastal Labrador in the 25 to 27 range there. So very warm right across the province. And tomorrow, Labrador City near 26. Happy Valley Goose Bay, I think, will be into the low 30s there tomorrow. A cold front will be moving its way from west to east across the province midweek. And it slices through and into that heat in central Newfoundland on Wednesday, uh, I, should send, I should say central Labrador and western Labrador on Wednesday with showers and a risk of thunderstorms uh, with temperatures cooling off and behind into the low 20s. For Newfoundland, it's another warm one on Wednesday. We're high 20s and flirting with 30 yet again with the cold front coming through on the island Wednesday night in through Thursday. So we'll talk about that in full detail tonight on Here and Now. That's 5.30 in most of Labrador, 6 o'clock on the island. Good afternoon. Uh, that means it's time for Crosstalk on CBC Radio. I'm Zeus here. On the show today, we are in the parking lot of CBC right here on Prince Philip Drive. And what a glorious day it is. Thanks, Ryan. Because Ryan told us this would be a good day to have an antique car show in the parking lot of CBC. And that's what we're doing right now. We're asking you today, what is your favorite antique automobile? Call 722-7111. Or long distance, 1 800 563 8255. Hope you're having a great Monday, and a, like I mentioned, a beautiful day in St. John's. Ryan Snodden said this would be a good day to do a show like this outdoors. and. He was right. Connie Hilliard is standing next to me this afternoon. Connie's with the Newfoundland Antique and Ca Classic Car Club, Newfoundland and Labrador. Hi, Connie. I'm good, thanks. How are you doing? Fantastic. Thank you for coming, and thanks for joining us here this afternoon. Um, tell me about the Car Club. What is it all about? How long has it been around? So this is our 36th year. Uh, we're just a bunch of people who enjoy cars, uh, socializing. We do a little bit of fundraising for local charities. Uh, just a great social organization, family family organization. We enjoy, you know, Sunday cruises, fine weather, supporting, you know, we do car shows like at the seniors' homes. Uh, we take the Easter Seals children to Bergs every summer, something they really enjoy. So. Now, Easter Seals, is that one of the charity one of the charities your group uh, represents or uh, collects uh, money for? Yeah, we've been supporting them since 1981. That was when we had our first car show for them. Mm -hmm. And they were uh, the Children's Rehab Center at that time. And they've changed names a few times, but we've stayed with them over the years. And how do those children like it when you take them to the Bergs every summer? Oh my God, they look forward to it every year. And you, know, you should see them in the convertibles. They have so much fun. Nice. Yeah. And uh, have you guys done that run yet this year? Yeah, we did it about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. And you guys have big shows every weekend, or is it every second weekend kind of thing? No, we do one major show every year where we raise money for Easter Seals and the Compass Shriners, and that's coming up next weekend. And uh, we do various shows throughout the summer. There's always something on to go every weekend, and you can pick and choose what you want to go to. And, of course, Thursday nights we go to a &W. On Kenmount Road. Kenmount Road, yes. And usually a crowd of us will get together. We'll go in, hang out at A&W for a bit, talk to our friends, and then we'll uh, go on a cruise. And we usually plan a different route every week. And yeah, so get out get out and enjoy the cars. Well, if you're enjoying the cars today, feel free to give us a call and tell us what your favorite antique automobile is. Call 722-7111 or long distance 1-800-563-8255. And we are live on our CBC Newfoundland and Labrador Facebook page this afternoon. So if you're handy to a computer or have one in your hand that looks like a telephone, uh, also uh, feel free to, uh, to chime in with your comments there. Now, we have a couple of people in front of this beautiful Pontiac, and uh, you would be? Joan Fogarty. Joan Fogarty, and you would be? Tom Fogarty. Tom Fogarty. Now, uh, tell me about this car, Joan. 
Well, it's a 1940 Pontiac Silver Streak, and we bought it in California in 2011 and had it shipped here. And we've been enjoying it ever since. Uh, before you bought this vehicle, were you into antiques? Yes, uh, my husband had a 1953 uh, Chev pickup, and we also had a 1964 Volkswagen Bug. So how does this drive? How does this feel on the road? Oh, it's very solid. Uh, the seats are almost like a sofa, so... Uh, but I keep looking for the seat belt, which we don't have. <laughs> now, Tom, uh, this, uh, this vehicle has an interesting story behind it. You and I were chatting on the phone earlier this morning. Uh, why does this vehicle look familiar to me? Well, this vehicle was in the movie Marty. Uh, in, uh, I think it was two years ago, was it, Tom? A couple of years? Yeah. So, uh... That was the movie about the uh, famous Nova Scotia painter. That's right, yeah, yeah. Uh, How did you get into uh, owning antique vehicles? Well, I always, I always liked old antique vehicles, and my father always had old cars over the years, and uh, just brings back memories when you look at, you know, all the old cars that are around. And uh, it's just a plain car. There's no, you know, it's just a beer necessity. You got a radio and you got uh, bricks and signals that you got to work with your hand. But uh, other than that, it's just, you know. Yeah. Well, it, this is a beautiful uh, thing you're standing in front of. I'm very envious of you, Tom. Thank you very much. Thank you for calling this morning and asking if you could bring this one down. Okay, thank you very much. See? All right, you have a great day, Tom Fogarty. And uh, I just have something here on our Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Facebook feed today. Uh, someone wrote in, Mark wrote in to say uh, his favorite car from his childhood is the 1970 Oldsmobile 422. And I'm getting a huge delay in my headphones here, but I'll try to keep going here. Uh, come on over here. Now, Connie, let's move on to the next vehicle. Now, this is not an antique, but it's definitely a, a beautiful car. Or is it an antique? I don't know. It is an antique. I'm going to walk in front of my cameraman here. You, sir, yeah. would be? Uh, John DeWire. John DeWire. And, John, can you tell us about the car in front of us here? Uh, it's a 1981 Corvette, and it's all original. I bought it new and I uh, still have it today. So it's uh, just something to enjoy and drive around. <laughs> That's basically it. Can you tell me about the first day you bought it, the first day you drove it? Uh, yeah, it was quite exciting because uh, I looked at that and I looked at uh, a Datsun 280Z and this one kind of won me over. <laughs> well, uh, 30 odd years <laughs> later, this one is much. Uh, more cool choice. You uh, yes, I did. I make yeah. a, made a good choice at the time. Yeah. Now, there's nothing wrong with the Datsuns, of course. <laughs> no, but no. This looks pretty no, good. No, no. That's, that's Would you decide, describe yourself as a car buff? Uh, no, just generally, generally interested in cars. And man, it's nice to you get a lot of, meet a lot of nice people around in the, in the car shows and so on. And that's what it's all about. There is a huge social element to this, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You meet a lot of friends and acquaintances that you'll meet, and they'll last a lifetime. <laughs> well, I've met some day. great people uh, here this afternoon. Yeah. Well, that's good, Dan. I'm glad you did. <laughs> Do you uh, own any other vehicles? Uh, no, not, no. Not, not in the okay. collector type. But, uh, okay. I just uh, got this and held on to it. And, I'm glad you did. Thanks for coming down yeah. today. Yeah, thank you. Okay, have a nice day, sir. Uh, Connie Hillier is with the Newfoundland and Labrador Antique and Classic Car Club. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, the community that you're part of. I mean, is, is this a province-wide thing? Is it an Avalon thing? It's province-wide, mostly here in St. John's. But we do have members in Labrador and out on the West Coast. Yeah. And there are some uh, smaller clubs across the island as well. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we, and we get involved in things together as, from time to time. Uh, if you were to ballpark it, how many would you say are involved in this hobby? Thousands, maybe? Oh, there's probably four or five thousand antiques here on the island. Registered. Yes. So there's more than that, really. Yes, and I wanted to get into that too. I mean, what 
what kind of a state does the vehicle have to be in to get that antique plate? And I'll ask you a little bit about that. I just want to mention that we are on Facebook Live today, and on Facebook, Roscoe says his favorite automobile is the 77 Nova. And you can call in and uh, tell us what your favorite vehicle is this afternoon on Crosstalk. We're doing an antique car show in the parking lot of CBC. I'm here with Connie Hillier with the Newfoundland Antique and Classic Car Club of Newfoundland and Labrador. Call 722-7111 or long distance 1-800-563-8255. Sometimes they see a vehicle that has an antique plate in this province. Are there certain rules or can anybody with an old car put an antique plate on? No, the car has to be 25 years old and it has to be uh, original or as close to original as possible and it has to be inspected uh, and the form is filled out it, to qualify for the antique plates. Okay. Now, are there any rules on how many original parts there are or there has to be or anything along those lines? Uh, there's only period modifications allowed. And what does that mean? Like a lot of cars have headers. Headers are not a an original thing for a car and they don't qualify for antique plates. I see. You know, so so uh, what you would, when you, you say period. you an adjustment to your car for safety reasons, if you updated your, your brake system or you put in seat belts or something like that, that would still qualify as an antique car. Okay. So it has to be at least 25 years old? Yes. Now what was it like say 25 years ago before the internet and uh, getting parts and finding the part that you needed on the island is it easier now with the uh, world that we live in oh absolutely yeah i mean you know you can get on the internet and search and find and now there's a lot of companies as well uh, that you can access okay i just want to mention on facebook today too uh, paula hogan has written in uh, her favorite antique automobile is the ltd station wagon it was her first car at age 17. it had powered windows and powered seats nice. Ooh, that was a good one. <laughs> Very nice. I remember the first time I saw a vehicle with powered windows. I thought, well, anything is possible. Uh, tell me more about uh, uh, what's the difference between an antique car and a classic car, or is there really a difference? Well, there is a little bit of difference. Uh, so an antique car can be anything 25 years or older, mm -hmm. but a classic car is more of a limited edition. Uh, could be something that there was a very small number of them made, or could be like a one-of-a-kind something like that and that does happen I was looking at uh, a photo this morning on Twitter earlier someone wrote in to say that uh, his favorite car was the El Camino and uh, it was initially a one or two year run and then they stopped the production and then they kicked it back into production a couple of years later so it's those types of vehicles that are that had short runs in the production plant yeah I would think so okay already well, uh, let's look at this vehicle here now. What are we looking at here, Connie? So now we have a 1958 Edsel Citation. Okay. Now this thing is owned by Mr. Bob Ford, who's standing right next to me. And uh, Bob, thanks for coming down to the car show today, sir. No problem. It's great to be here. When did your passion with uh, these vehicles begin? With the Edsel in 1957, when I saw the first pictures in Life magazine. <laughs> And I got all the pictures still that I took out of these Life magazines in a scrapbook home. And there was a picture of a white convertible. I said, sometime I'm having one like that. Yep. I didn't get it in 85. Okay, so from 1957 to 85, that's a long wait. You're a very patient person. I had several other Edsels, but not a convertible. Okay, I see. When was the first vehicle you bought? When was that? It was in 64 for $30. I used the three years. Where did you get it? It was left abandoned on the highway up by Sunnyside. You're kidding me. All the windows beaten out, uh, wheels stolen off it, and we towed it to Bonavista with a tow rope. And I restored it on the weekends. And that was when your your passion, your hobby uh, in this area started, no doubt. What other classic vehicles or antique vehicles have you owned over the years? Or oh, the, the ones that stick out in your mind? I think everything I owned was antique when I got it. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, I had a, I've had a couple of 64 Mercury's, real nice cars. But uh, the Edsels are the ones that I like. And uh, we've driven this car here to Vancouver, or Victoria, B.C. twice. 
and we towed a camper trailer with it four or five years. And I've got a black one, like a two-door hardtop. We towed a trailer to Virginia one year, and next year Detroit and Cape Cod several times. So they just like gone. That sounds incredible. That's a lot of mileage. Did you expect that you would get that much use out of these? These cars are good. They're really good. They just got a bad reputation. They did, didn't they? Yeah. And for the uninitiated, uh, why did they get a bad reputation? They got a, they had a couple of electrical problems with uh, the electric shift in the center of the steering wheel and the heater controls gave some problems. But uh, we got that fixed up. And the problem with the, the gear shift is still a bit finicky sometimes, but I got the, uh, I've got plan two. So if I do have trouble on the road, I can be back on the road in 15 minutes. Do you want a garage? Is this where you do all this work? I mean, yeah. Your own personal garage? Oh, yeah, a backyard garage. A backyard garage. Uh, yeah. a backyard garage. Yeah. I'm, I'm restoring a 58 Edsel now in the garage. I'll have it finished before Christmas. How difficult is it to get uh, the parts you need in this day and age? Uh, because I remember years ago growing up on the west coast of Newfoundland and someone would have a vehicle in the yard on, on, on blocks, you know, it could be a Corvette or something, and over the years you'd see the parts being sold off it and, <laughs> until there was nothing left. No, every mechanical part on this car is still available in aftermarket. You can get anything for this mechanically, mm -hmm. except things like engine mounts, which I've had to fabricate, mm -hmm. but things are basically easy to get. Okay. Bob, thank you for coming down here today. Thanks for bringing your Edsel. It's a magnificent automobile. Thanks. Yeah. Good to be here. It was good to chat with you. Yeah. Bob Ford is here. We're live in the parking lot of CBC this afternoon asking you what your favorite antique automobile, automobile is. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook where we're live now on the CBC Newfoundland Labrador Facebook page where Mary Lou has written in to say her favorite vehicle is the Edsel as well. If you have a favorite antique automobile you'd like to chat about, give us a call, 722-7111, or long distance, 1-800-563-8255. We're live on the radio as well. This is Crosstalk. I'm Cease here with Connie Hillier, who's with the Newfoundland Antique and Classic Car Club in this province. You've known Bob for a while, I, I believe? About 30 years yep. since I got involved with the club. He's, uh, he's, if there was a person who's into it, I think Bob represents the individual who's into it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, if I get a call looking for car parts or someone to fix a call, I always refer them to Bob. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. All right, Connie, let's take a little walk to this uh, 1987 Cadillac and the gentleman standing in front of it. Hello, sir. How are you today? Good. Thank you very much. And you? Uh, I'm fine. It was a really nice day. Nice to see you here too, by the way. Um, tell me about this beautiful vehicle that uh, you're standing next to. Uh, oh, and what's your name? I'm sorry. Jerry Hall. Jerry Hall. Okay, Jerry, uh, sorry about that. Go ahead. Tell me about your car, please. Uh, I got her about eight, nine years now. Uh, my nephew's father and I owned it, and he sort of got sick and he was giving it one to family, uh -huh. and nobody wanted it. So I ended up with it by just being in the right place at the right time. <laughs> Were you a collector of antiques before? No, 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 no. I used to drive a transport truck. What is it about this car that uh, appealed to you? Nice, beautiful driving, large car, a big car. I love the car, big car. Well, when you got here earlier, I was checking it out. I mean, the inside looks like a couch. It looks like a lazy boy chair the seats do. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> it's just lovely, beautiful. There's a beautiful shine uh, to it as well, uh, Jerry. Tell me, uh, what's it like trying to keep this thing clean, and what do you have to do to keep it look like this? Well, you should keep it home and, and don't go out at all. It's funny that'll do it. <laughs> no, I, uh, I shine in it before I go to any show, mm -hmm. and uh, keep it clean. I keep the cover on it in the garage. That's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Are you a mechanic yourself? If you have any problems with it, do you uh, do you tinker? You tinker, you tinker room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And my nephew is a mechanic, so he owns that truck over there. We'll get down to that one now in a few seconds. <laughs> so, so if so I can't fix it, he can. Okay. <laughs> so, so you have a mechanic in the family? Yes. That yes. never hurts, eh? No, no. 
As good as a doctor or a lawyer in the family, I think. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> or a plumber and electrician. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you very much, Jerry. It was a fantastic meeting you this afternoon, sir. Thanks yeah, for coming in. Thanks for bringing this down. Uh, Connie Hillier is with me today. She's with the uh, Newfoundland Antique Classic Car Club, Newfoundland Labrador. And uh, that's a nice vehicle there, too. Now, we will get to yours soon enough. You have a lovely 68 uh, Plymouth. Um, I'm going to ask you a little bit more now about the... Uh, about antique versus uh, 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 classic vehicles it's uh, uh, you know when you when you look at the much older ones do we have anybody in this province who owns you know the old model t fours going back that far that you're aware of oh yes we do oh we're, yeah okay we have a few in our club as well okay yeah, yeah. not here today but right. Uh, in your club, what would be the oldest vehicle in the fleet, do you know? I should have warned you that this would be like a test here today. Early 1900s, okay. for sure. There's a couple of like Model A's. Yeah. Um, okay, I don't know right. offhand what year, but early 1900s. Okay. I'm just noticing on Facebook today, uh, Leah says her first father-in-law's car, her, her father-in-law rather, has a rebuilt 1954 Chevy. And that looks like it would be a beautiful vehicle as well. Fantastic. Let's mosey along here. Now, this is not an antique automobile. I'm no expert in antique automobiles, but I know this is not a, an antique automobile. How are you today, sir? Good. And your name is? Kyle Hems. Kyle. Nice to meet you, Kyle. Tell me about your BMW here today. Uh, 2005. Yeah, 2005, yeah. Uh, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia? Yeah. yeah. It looks really nice. Yeah. I bet the ride is really smooth, too. It's a convertible, too. Oh, yeah. What was it like driving down here this afternoon? It was really good. It was really good? Okay, yeah. fantastic. And is that your dad here? Yeah. Can I say hi to your dad for yeah, a sure. second? Hello, Dad. How uh, are you doing today? I'm do really good, really good today. Thank you for bringing this down. I noticed you have the Newfoundland Antique Classic Car Club sticker in in this vehicle. Today. Yeah, yeah, we do. Actually, we uh, we got involved with them back uh, through the Bergs runs originally. And so uh, one of the things the clubs are involved in, I don't know if Connie's told you about that, but I'm sure she will. Yeah. So yeah, and, and when we get the sticker, of course, he wanted to make sure it got stuck on the car. So. Right, right. Well, that's a fantastic cause. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. It was nice chatting with you today. Thank you very much. And Kyle, thank you for coming down today too, sir. Thank you. Okay. Crosstalk on CBC Radio. We're asking people what their favorite antique automobile is in this province. Call 722-7111 or long distance 1-800-563-8255. Sam Moss is on the line from St. John's. Good afternoon, Sam, how are you? Good. Well, you sound like a, a little younger to me. How old are you? 10. You're 10 years old, okay. You obviously don't own a vehicle or maybe you do. No. Okay, tell me what your favorite antique car is, Sam. Um. A 1965 Corvette Stingray. Oh, a Corvette Stingray. Now, I just want to ask Connie. Connie, can you visualize that car in your mind, the Corvette Stingway? Stingray? Yeah, I'm familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. And Sam, why why do you like that car so much? It just, I just find it looks really cool, and it has a lot of cool features on it. And what are some of the cool features that you like? I like the light how the lights go, and there's like a lot of bumps on it everywhere. Ah, oh, that's right. Do you have any other favorite vehicle? Yeah, but it's an, 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 an antique car. Yeah, uh, but do you have a your second most favorite as opposed to your first most favorite? Oh, um, a Lamborghini Minerva. <laughs> yeah, you can't beat the Lamborghinis, can you? He has expensive taste. He has yeah. expensive taste. Very expensive taste, Sam. And uh, does your dad or your mom have any favorite vehicles? Um, I'm not sure. Oh. And how did you get into, uh, how did you get into being interested in antique cars? Um, well, I just, since I was three, I really liked cars. Since you were three. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Sam. Is there anything else you want to say before I let you go? Oh, yeah, and my uncle um, loves cars and stuff, and he has a few Lego ones. Oh. And he has, well, it isn't really an antique car, but he has a Golf GT, a Volkswagen oh. Golf GT. Wow. So I bet you and your uncle like to spend time together and talk cars, don't you? Yeah. 
I bet. Will you tell him I said hello? Okay. Okay, Sam. You take care. Have a good day. I will. Bye. Bye bye. That's Sam Moss, 10 year old Sam Moss, in love with the stingrays. Uh, Connie, uh, I, I guess it's fair enough to ask you, but the varying ages of, and range and ages of people who, uh, who are into this hobby, uh, when you guys go out, I mean, I guess ages, all ages show up? All ages. It uh, seems to be more of like the 40 plus, but we're trying to get, uh, get out there and get more younger people involved. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully this will help. Maybe yeah. Sam will help spread the word. Maybe Sam will be a new member in a few years. <laughs> okay. I hope so. I suspect if his uncle has anything to do with it, he will. Uh, Mary Ann Templeton on Twitter says, One of the most incredible collections of antique vehicles in Canada belongs to Vernon Smith of Swift Current. Uh, one of his vehicles has a record player. I've seen a photograph of that online over the, uh, well, over the recent years. I've actually that into vehicle. You have. Tell us yeah. about that vehicle. So Vern's collection in Swift Current is like world class. He has over 60 antiques, um, uh, I'd say 90% convertibles. Mm -hmm. uh, every rare car, every uh, all of his cars, they go to like national shows and international shows. He always comes away with awards. If you've never been there, it's worth the visit. I heard that Vern is the type of guy, if you just show up and knock on his door, you can go in and have a look around. Oh, absolutely. And that. like, if you go down to his uh, museum in Swift Kern, he donates all the money that he collects on the door to the schools. Nice. Really good guy. And I shouldn't be doing it. Well, I, uh, I was talking with a guy the other day inside CBC, and uh, he was working on a couple of land and sea shows, and he says one of the upcoming shows is going to be on Vern and his collection. Yes, and a few other shows have been down there and taped as well, like yeah. Dennis Gage. I know he's been down there a few times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. We have another listener on the line right now. Brent Stevenson is on the phone from St. John's. Hi, Brent. How are you? Good afternoon, Cecil. Long time no here. <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you doing? How come you're not up here? I'm home. <laughs> you're what? I'm sorry? I'm home. Oh, you're home. Yeah. What favorite vehicle do you have in your mind? What's your favorite antique? My favorite antique car is the GTO from Republic of Doyle. Ah, the GTO from the Republic of Doyle. Yeah. I am familiar with it. Yeah. <laughs> what is it about that car, Brent? It's just the way I like it, and besides that, um, Alan Harkle drives it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was pretty good, eh? Yeah. He looked pretty good behind the wheel of that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I thought I thought somebody told me they had two or three f for the filming of the show. One for driving and one for, I guess, parking lot scenes. Yeah. And I think they had yeah. the right one off uh, one time. They had to blow one up or catch it on I fire know, or I something know. like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I know the original owner of that vehicle, and uh, he, he was working on that for years as well. <laughs> well, Brent, thank you very much. Thanks for calling in today. It was good to hear from you again. All right, see. Bye-bye. Okay, have a good day. All right, bye-bye. All the best. This is Crosstalk on CBC, and we're on Facebook Live this afternoon. We're asking you what your favorite antique automobile is. Uh, we're having an antique classic car show in the parking lot of CBC. We have about one, two, three, six. We've got about a dozen vehicles here today. And if you want to check them out, just go to our Facebook page, CBC, Newfoundland, and Labrador. And also, if you have any thoughts on your favorite antique vehicle, write it down. Ariana's here. She'll pass it along to me. We have... Gavin will uh, answer Gavin I'm sorry answering the telephone this afternoon we're not answering the phone he's actually telling me who's on the line and the numbers to call are 722-7111 or long distance 1-800-563-8255 and now we're in front of your vehicle I was embarrassed the other day I took a sh photograph of you outside your vehicle and then I had to write you back and say what is your vehicle so <laughs> I know what it is now but tell the audience uh, about your car it's a 1968 Plymouth Sport Fury convertible. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, how long have you had it? About 11 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what is it about this vehicle that appealed to you initially? Uh, convertible. You like the convertible? I love convertible. Uh -huh. uh, it's a big car, yep. and I love a big car. And it's just beautiful to drive. It looks absolutely uh, spectacular. It's black, by the way, for the uh, radio audience, and very shiny. How do you, how do you keep it so clean looking, Connie? It's just a love of cars. I uh, 
use a waterless wash, something oh, yeah. new I've started this year. Okay. Absolutely in love with it. It's so easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what is it about it that makes it so easy? What's the difference? Well, before I would be using a hose and I'd have to sit in the garage for two hours after getting all the water dripping, dripping, dripping. Right. Now it's done in like half an hour. So it's what you call a, a waterless uh, c a compound, yeah. and you just rub it on and rub it off? Or? Yeah, spray it on and you take it off with a, white, with a damp cloth. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the name of it, but okay. it's a really good product. It's a really good product. And tell me about your uh, love affair with antique automobiles. When did it start for you? I always had a love up to 50s cars, right from a young age. Mm -hmm. And back in about uh, 88, I got involved with a, a guy who had two cars and I was hooked from there. Oh, really? So you know, I got rid of him and got my own cars. <laughs> Probably a good deal. <laughs> so I had a 66 Ford Falcon before this. Oh, yes. Yeah. And where's that car now, I wonder? I actually gave it to uh, one of the children of Easter Seals. Oh, yeah. With permission from his parents. Yeah. And it's being restored. Nice. Oh, that's an absolute... He says I'm going to be the first to drive it when he gets it restored. That's a great story. Easter yeah. Seal has it. An Easter Seal kid has it. Uh, tell me about what's under the bonnet of this thing. Uh, what's the machinery like underneath? It's a 318. Great engine. Mm -hmm. can't, can't kill it. Is that right? Oh, yeah. No trouble. Is it simple to repair? I mean, when, when, you, when you do have problems, uh, what's it like trying to, trying to get it looked after? Uh, it's pretty good. I have a few friends who help me out, you know, a few mechanics. Right. Uh, but there's... So little goes wrong compared to when you look under the engine of a new car. <laughs> it's much simpler. It is much yeah. simpler, isn't it? Yeah. That's absolutely beautiful. Uh, what about seat belts? Did it come with seat belts? This one comes with lap belts. Oh, lap belts. Uh, very same as what you get on an airplane. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, you're listening to Crosstalk on CBC Radio. Call 722-7111 or long distance 1-800-563-8255. We're having an antique automobile show in the parking lot of CBC right now. A couple of folks have shown up to have a little look around. It seems like these cars attract an audience. What is it about these vehicles? Anytime I'm out driving that car, if you stop, there's always someone there to talk to you, to ask you what year it is, or tell you they had one like it, and it, you know, it's really a great social thing. It is. You meet so many wonderful people. It's, yeah. it's an interesting point, now. and I've noticed that this afternoon too. There's just people just showing up on Facebook. Scott Cook says his favorite vehicle is the '68 Mustang Shelby, and uh, I can't visualize that one. Are you familiar with that one, the '68 yeah. Mustang? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's a few of those around. There's a few of those around. Yeah. All right. Call in to 722-7111 on Crosstalk or Long Distance, 1-800-563-8255. Tell us what your favorite antique car is, or you can do it on Facebook as well. And there's still lots of time left to uh, chime in on Facebook or call into the show. Uh, CBC Newfoundland and Labrador Facebook page. We are live with these vehicles. If you're handy to a computer or a phone, and your computer, if your computer is on your phone, uh, feel free to have a look. We have some beautiful, beautiful cars in the parking lot of CBC this afternoon. Okay, let's pop over to the Trans Am. And uh, how are you doing today, sir? Good, sir. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming down this you're afternoon. Welcome, you're welcome, sir. Now I'm a bit. Uh, I have a soft spot for these Trans Ams. You want to hear the story? There was a gentleman who lived in our neighborhood in the early to mid 70s. Yes. Tom Humphreys was his name. Okay. And uh, he had a Trans Am. It was orange. It was just like this one. Yes. It was absolutely beautiful. So that's where, uh, that's why, I, and I can re remember as kids, we would stand around it, you know, and get yeah. our pictures taken next to it. Oh, yeah. It was absolutely fantastic. Tell me about your Trans Am. Here. It's a 1981 Trans Am. Yep. It's a 305, four barrel, right? She's all power. She's all original. Well, I couldn't say she's all original. I got her painted two years ago. But the inside, we're in seats and the poultry and all that. It's all original. Mm -hmm. Everything works on her. She got power trunk, power windows, remote, uh, air conditioning, radio, she, uh, tilt. She got it all. When that came out in 1981, she sold for 12500 Wow. That's with everything in her. At that time, that's the best she could get, you know, in that particular car with, with, with all the stuff in it. And now I think she's worth. Last time I had her appraised six years ago, she was worth twenty, twenty thousand. So from there, she only goes up in price. It, it only it's not too up. many. She's one of three hundred only painted that color. Came out, was oh, made. Is that right? Yeah, one of three hundred. Yeah. 
Yeah. She came down from Grinsby, Ontario. That's where she was originally sold from. I, I got the dealership up there and I got all the papers on her. I got everything. Everything. So yeah. right from the dealership? Yeah, right from the dealership at that time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And what was it about the Trans Am? What was it about oh, this I car? Did, I, had an, I had an 80 uh, Valiant four-door. First one I got into this, you see if I liked it. But I didn't like the car so much. I just got into it because I was getting into the club. And I said, now I'll try it with this car and see how it made out. But then when I seen this one, that done it for me. <laughs> so I was sold on this. Can it go? Oh, it can go. I mean, I don't break no speed limits or nothing like that. I, I, I think too much of it to race with it or anything like that, right? I mean, you know, this is my social love in the, life in the summer, myself and my wife, and we enjoy it. We go to all, everything in Santa we can get to, especially seniors' homes and all that. We do a lot of charity with the clubs doing that, and it's just, just fun just to be in that, right? Yeah. Where do you go in the summertime? What do you mean? Then? Uh, where do you drive your car in terms of uh, well, popping every, into small? I'll tell you, if it's a fine night, every night after supper, I take her and go down Water Street and go and see what's going on, come right up through Nets. I live in there on Tops of the Road, so mm -hmm. we always take a trip down around Water Street in the night time, see what's happening out around there. Sure. And during the day, that we just take a run maybe up to Long Pond or Manuals or Holy Road, you know, mm -hmm. anywhere like that, you know. Yeah. yeah. What's it like when you go around and you park somewhere? Are people more inclined to, to come up and speak with you? I guess owning a car like this is not for shy people, is it? Well, you go to the A&W on, uh, on Thursday night, you'll find out how many pictures of this is around in the city. Everywhere you look, I was in the Hickman's uh, last week in the big car show, and I mean, everybody comes up and takes a picture of her, everybody. And I hear the stories about they had a car, their parents had a car like this years ago, oh, yes. when they didn't, who could afford it and that. You know, that was the thing at that time. That was a lot of money, 1981. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I try to keep her all original and keep her in shape, you know. I put her away in the winter for, you know, in October, and I take her out again in May. Mm -hmm. So she's stored every winter. Stored every winter. And during the day, when I'm not using her, I keep her tarped over just to keep the paint so that you don't blister and like that, right? Right. Yeah, right. try to keep her as best as I can, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful car. It's a great story, too. It was so nice chatting with you today. I forgot to ask you your name. Frank DeLacy. Frank Dacey. No, DeLacy. DeLacy. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, sir. It was a great pleasure meeting you, sir. Dacey. You have a nice afternoon. Okay, let's keep on going now. I have no idea what time it is, but... Uh, if you have time to call this afternoon, 722-7111 uh, or long distance, 1-800-563-8255. Uh, a little mini antique car show in front of CBC this afternoon. Feel free to uh, call in and tell us what your favorite antique automobile is. Or you can join this conversation on Facebook as well. Their Newfoundland Labrador, CBC Newfoundland Labrador Facebook page this afternoon is where you can watch our antique car show. And I'm with someone from the Newfoundland Antique and Classic Car Club, uh, Bonnie Hilliard. Connie. Connie. Connie Hilliard. <laughs> Do you know how many balls I got up in the air in my head right now, Connie? <laughs> Quite a few. <laughs> it's good to hear from people, though. A lot of people calling in. Now, I'm looking at this great Plymouth, and I had to ch chat with this gentleman right here and his wife. I was chatting with both of you earlier this morning. Norma, right? Mona. Norma. Mona. Yeah. And what's your name, Mona? Mona? Morrow. Morrow? Greg. And Greg Morrow. Uh, who wants to answer the question? Where, where does this car come from? Originally, it was uh, my grandfather's uh, in New Brunswick, but I've lived in Newfoundland since 1975. So the car kind of found me instead of me finding the car. Tell and, me about it. Well, at uh, age 15, I inherited the car, and a year later, I took my driver's tests on it. And uh, four years after that, I joined the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and ever since then, the car and I and Mona have been moving around, and our boys, of course, and our family. And uh, here we are today. I've owned the car basically for 49 years. So you you obtained ownership of it when you were 15 years old, but isn't there a, an earlier connection to you, to this car with you? <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. Uh, thank you for that, Cease. Uh, the family story is when my mom went into labor in 1953 when I was born. We lived out in rural New Brunswick, and my grandfather came up in this particular car and took her to the hospital to uh, deliver her proud boy, as they say. <clears throat> That's incredible. It is. So you, you you were driven to the hospital in this vehicle. Well, my mom was, and then in we Israel. then we both came came back, of course, from the hospital. In it. Yeah. That's a fantastic story. So I mean, this this vehicle has a is near and dear to your heart, like uh, 
like nothing else. I'm sure. Well, as you say, you know, you have a bit of a nomad life in the RCMP, moving from place to place, and the older you get, uh, you want to remember or something from home and you would never have inherit the family home but now I have the family vehicle that I take with me and it's very very important. Sure it is. I mean you took your driving your road test in it your yeah. grandfather owned it I mean that's an incredible yeah. and yeah exactly when the, well when the grandchildren come home they the first place they head for now is the car <laughs> and, and we spend hours out there in it and uh, it's just a f talk talk sure. piece and as my dad another benefit of all this Believe it or not, as my dad lived to be 90, what do you talk to your dad about when he's 70 and you're 50? And when I did a major rebuild on the car, every night we would talk and it just gave us something to talk about and uh, something in common and kept us connected. Oh, for sure. I can, see that. Uh, can you give me any idea how inexpensive this hobby is? Don't go me? there, please. <laughs> it's not a subject I want to address right now. I was. That's not fair, I, <laughs> <laughs> we would live the way, as Greg said, we move from place to place and, you know, when you're living up north especially, you're expecting parcels all the time in the mail. And so I'd run, every time I get a notice, I'd run to the post office thinking somebody was sending us some care package and it may be a long piece of metal. chrome or a piece of a metal or whatever <laughs> gadgets that go inside the car. So I was always the pick-up parts guy, right. gal. Right. Well, I'm sure you did it. <laughs> but like I said, job. the grandchildren, that's what I enjoy the most when I come home. Yeah. They spend hours just taking it's us to the park and taking their imagination going wild with that. Fantastic. And that's it. Anyway, it's a labor of love. He spent many years at that. It's, oh. it's absolutely spectacular. Uh, where in Canada has this vehicle moved <laughs> with you and your wife? Are you ready for this? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Corner Brook, Gander, Placentia, Holy Root, St. John's, Yellowknife, back to paradise. When we shipped it to uh, Yellowknife, after, we were there for about a year and I said, Mona, we must well enjoy the car. So we paid to have it shipped to Yellowknife and it had a detour. The company made a mistake and shipped it all the way to Vancouver. Yeah. So it's, it's quite a story. Uh, so, I'm not kidding when I say there's a lot of miles on that chassis. <laughs> yeah. And the car too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Greg, it was great chatting with you. Thank and, you. and thanks for bringing in uh, your vehicle, your family vehicle, and thanks for the family stories. Well, I enjoy your reporting too, Cease. It's nice to, nice to meet you. Yes. I've, I, I know you worked with the RCMP. I, I've known you for years. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for coming in, both thanks, of you. Thanks, Cease. Thank yeah. You. Have a nice day. Terence Malloy is on the line from St. John's this afternoon. Terence, we're asking people what their favorite antique automobile is. Uh, Clarence Malloy it is. Oh, Terence. I'm sorry. Uh, Clarence. Oh, Clarence. I'm sorry, Clarence. Go right ahead. Sorry about that. A little yeah. miscommunication today. <laughs> I got a, a 53 Dodge pickup. A 53 Dodge pitch, a pickup. A 56, I see Connie I'm Hilliard sorry. nodding uh, here. 56 Dodge pickup. I'm sorry. 56. And how long have you had it? I've had it now about uh, 27 or 28 years. Wow, that's incredible. Where did you get it? I bought it in uh, St. John's into, uh, uh, on Kmount Road. They used to sell, uh, Buddy had um, Walsh, I think he used to sell uh, Yamahas there, and uh, somebody traded her yeah. in on a, on a boat, you know. Right. And, uh, and I bought her because uh, yeah. we used to have a uh, pickup. Fantastic. And were colors. you into antiques before then? No, I wasn't, no. But I always liked the uh, cars like in the 50s and, and the 60s. My wife, her first car she had was a 64 Comet. Oh, really? And, that uh, sounds like a nice one, too. 64. And uh, I had, uh, my first car was a 68 Plymouth Fury. But uh, uh, we all, my father always had pickups. The first pickup he had was a 52 Ford, and she was $1,800 on the road. Hard to believe they were practically <laughs> giving them away back then, or so yeah. it seems by today's numbers, eh? Yeah, and my 56 Dodge, my grandson, uh, uh, he, draw, he graduated there, he's 17, he graduated there, uh, you know, high school there in um, a couple of months ago, and uh, he drove her at his graduation. Wow. How do you find it uh, trying to look after those things? I mean, in terms of care, maintenance, you know, upkeep, that sort of thing, is it difficult? My son-in-law took her, uh, and he, he he done some work with her and painted her up there over the winter and mm -hmm. had something else. So uh, she's she's good to go now again. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Clarence, well, thanks for calling in today. It was good to hear from you. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. You have a nice day, buddy.
Paul Hilliard is on the line. Uh, he says, Facebook, I'm sorry, on Facebook. Yep, yeah, uh, says his, uh, his great, I, I, I can't read that. He says great, his fave show car. Oh, this one? Oh, this is his favorite car show. I like that. And I see Connie nodding in agreement. Listen, we have about seven minutes left. We have two vehicles to look at. There's a camera guy with us here somewhere. I don't know where he's gone. <laughs> we're doing it by we're doing it on the fly here today. How are you today? Good, you. Good, sir. What's your name? Ralph Critch. Ralph Critch. Ralph, you are standing in front of a Dodge. Tell me a little more about this. Well, she's 1957 Dodge. Yep. I have her about 16 years. I could tell you a little story about her. There was two guys up in Millertown, Moose Hutton, and they came across her in the woods. They went back that winter with a couple of skidoos, and they cut a trail and put her on a sled and hauled her out. And I bought her off a guy in uh, Carling, yeah. Marley Bellows. And uh, she was half decent, you know, but I had her restored since then. You know. So what kind of work did you have to do to get a to make it even roadworthy again? Well, I put a clip in her out, out of a Chrysler, and that gave me power brakes, power steering, and it gave me, uh, I had a V8 engine. She had a push button, she was a push button with a flathead six. She had no, she had no power steering, and, and uh, around town it was impossible to drive her. She was, you know, but when, my dad had, had, my father had 19 of those tax in from St. Mary's to St. John's. That's the reason why I put her in his memory. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. And uh, he, uh, we did, when we were yuffless, learned how to drive and well, we're always with him. We never minded, we didn't need power steering because you're on the gravel road. But once you got into the pavement yeah. and, and out here, slow. slow, you had yeah. to have power steering. Oh, so yeah. that's what I did with her. So I put her in his memory there about six years ago, you know. Do a lot of going in her. I can only imagine. Now let's talk about the uh, sign on top. It says, in, in, in memory of Steve Critch, St. Mary's to St. John's daily, daily. taxi driver. My six dad. days a week. Six days a week. Plus in the night time we'd have special trips. Yeah. And uh, not Sunday night, but he, he wasn't only, he was, he, he provided a taxi service for the, all of St. Mary's Bay, but now there was other taxis too, but he was he was up there in the service, and he had a, but not only did he help, any day he wouldn't have a full load of passengers, or he had a few passengers, he would bring home little pigs, little bonnets in the trunk of the car for people, you know, Perfect. and the rare for the, during the summer, he brought everything in the taxi, not only people, sheep on the wreck, <laughs> Brought home at one time he come with a little cave in the trunk, you know, for a person, so. <laughs> <laughs> Livestock too. Livestock too, yes. Oh, he was, he was a charmer. He loved, loved doing what he did, you know. Yeah. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure there's a couple of stories there. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, definitely, yes. What amazes me, you know, like, you go to a car show and in different communities and people would say, Steve Critch, the first time I went to St. John's, I went with him. And it's not a fellow come up. Steve Creech learned me how to drive. I got me a driver's license. He took me out on a Sunday with the, we had a constable then home, Billy Hawkins. So. A lot of great stories, you know, people, you know. I can only imagine, I can yeah. only imagine. So you're, you're a member of the Antique and Classic Car Club in this province. Yes. Tell, tell me about getting involved with that and uh, what, what it is about these cars that appeal to you. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing, you know, that, 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 that they draw so much attention, but there's an awful lot of antique cars that we don't see. People don't bring them out. But with the club, you know, there is a lot of cars. We, you know, we have around 140 to 160 members in, in the club, you know. But you probably get, at any one time, you probably get 30 or 40% of them right. out, you know. You won't get all the crews out. Sure. But then again, there's different car clubs around the Avenue of Nitzelin. Yeah. One time, you know, car club was, uh, that was the only one, you know, like you go, they have a big show, but now they have different car clubs and every every different community now has a car show, different weekend, you know, so yeah. it's, 
but I like it. I do a lot of going. Sounds like a nice way to kill a summer to me. It is, yes, yes. June wasn't too kind to us. No, no. We're making up for... You can thank Ryan Snodden for this weather today, by the way. <laughs> he told me last week, he said, if you're going to have a car show outside, do it on Monday. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> It was nice talking to you. Likewise, yes. Nice, okay. yes nice talking to you, sir. Yeah. Take care, Ralph Critch. Uh, one more vehicle here to go. And i got to get your name before we start this conversation. Go right ahead, sir. Who are you? Lowell Hall. Lowell Hallett and oh, Hall. Hall. Okay, sorry about that. i got the headphones on, and I'm not as young as I used to be. No, I'm hard to hear, too. <laughs> Tell me about this vehicle we're standing in front of. This is, I would say, maybe <laughs> the oldest one here today? It's a 1941 International. 1941 International, a little two-seater uh, pickup truck. Where'd you get this? This originally came out of the woods in Terranova Lake. You're That's kidding. That way, yeah. And it was taken out by a cousin of mine, and uh, I bought it off him and put her together. Now, did you hear the story on this car? Do you know this was spotted in the woods by a couple of moose hunters years yeah, ago? Yeah. And the boys went back in the wintertime and hauled and it out, hauled out, it out yeah. on this, on the, using yeah. snowmobiles. Yeah. So th this was in the woods by Tiranova Lake? Yes. Yeah. What kind of shape was it in when you initially uh, got it? Uh, I can show you a picture. Uh, well, you know what? That, it won't do you no good. It's bad radio. Pictures on TV. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> No, it was not. All I had was just the actual body part. Is that right? Yes, so had no drivetrain, nothing like that. No. And no how long? How, how long did it take you to get it looking like this? A little over a year. I was working every weekend and every night a week at it. Is that right? To, to get it done, yeah. It's yeah. absolutely beautiful, right? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, are you uh, a part of the car club itself? Do, uh, do you yeah, go around yeah, and help yeah. those people out yeah. there? Your events and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Do what we can. Do what you can. And uh, it's absolutely spectacular. Uh, words words can't even describe uh, how beautiful this old pickup uh, uh, looks and feels. How does it drive? Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah it's great on the highway. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, well, listen, I'm down to my last two minutes here, so I'll, I will let you go, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for bringing it in. Thank you. For thank you. It was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Well, Connie, what do you think? Uh, the show is just about, uh, it's just about time to wrap this thing up. I'm going to give uh, Mark Cumby, our uh, technician in the studio, a cue to uh, start playing the theme music when we get down to our last 60 seconds because there's a clock over there and I really can't tell what it says. Um, so tell me about what's uh, planned what your organization has planned. Tell me about a couple of the big car shows that are coming up this summer. So our major car show, uh, which is a fundraiser for Easter Seals and the Compass Shriners, is next Saturday. It's on the uh, Kona parking lot, and it's from 10 o'clock till four. All cars are welcome, not just antiques. Yeah. All cars, motorcycles, any kind of, anybody with an interest in vehicles is all is welcome. We do have a minimum $10 donation, and that money will go towards our charity. Mm -hmm. uh, when you mention motorcycles, are there many antique motorcycles in this province that you're aware of? There are a number. I'm not really sh sure how many. I'm not much into the bikes. But we do welcome the bikers to join the car show. Mm -hmm. And what about later on this summer? Are there any other major events planned for your organization as well? Well, we're involved right now with a Cross Canada tour. Mm -hmm. It started out in BC and it's on the way here. It's going to take them about eight weeks okay. and they're going to spend, I think, five days crossing the island and they're going to get here in St. John's around the 29th of August. Okay, so that'll be some big. stuff planned with them when they get here. Right. That'll be a big thing for your group then. Well, Connie, thank you very much. Connie Hilliard with the Newfoundland Antique Classic Car Club. It was a pleasure and I appreciate you doing all this and making this happen today. Oh, thank you. It was great to be here. You're very welcome. It was great again to see you. Take care, folks. A lovely day in St. John's. A lovely day here on the Parkway. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching on Facebook Live. And we'll see you on Tuesday, the exact same time tomorrow. It'll be our gardening show with Todd Boland.